Not every finished product resembles the blueprint it was based on. Sometimes mistakes are made. Sometimes plans have to be changed. Often, an engineer will finish creating something only to realize that there's a big problem with their design, one that they never thought of before they started building. Sometimes a mistake like this will doom a construction project completely, but other times they'll turn out to be happy little accidents, like all the incredible engineering calculations you're about to see in this video. Land space comes at a premium in New Zealand. It's one of the world's smaller countries and building large-scale transport facilities isn't easy, especially when one hand doesn't know what the other one is doing. We think that's how Gisborne Airport in New Zealand's Elgin suburb managed to end up being built with a railway line running straight through the middle of it. The trains run right across the airport's main runway, which sounds like a recipe for disaster. But despite the fact that the two different types of vehicle frequently cross close enough to each other to make you wince, there's never been a major accident here. It helps that the only planes that fly from here are small light ones used for internal flights or flights to Australia, as opposed to heading out elsewhere in the world. We can't even imagine how terrifying it must be to be sat in the carriage of a train and see a plane driving directly towards you at top speed. But so far, the planes have all taken to the air before plowing directly into the side of the rail cars. Let's hope things stay that way. There are some incredible and unique buildings in England's capital city of London. Architects with a flair for the unique are often sought out and paid millions of dollars to bring their best work to the area and create something that will stand out from the crowded skyline. One such innovation was a building that's been nicknamed the Walkie Talkie because of its distinctive shape. Unfortunately for the skyscraper, which is situated on Fenchurch Street, was voted the worst building in the United Kingdom in 2015. The shape and design of the building led to some unforeseeable accidents. The glass frontage of the structure reflects the sun with such intensity on summer days that it set a carpet on a neighboring building on fire in 2013, and followed up that trick by melting the roof of a luxury car parked on the street below it. During high winds, the curved exterior of the tower creates a wind tunnel strong enough to knock pedestrians over. Despite all of that, it's still standing, and Londoners have grown to love it. Australia's Sydney Opera House isn't just one of the most iconic buildings in Australia. It's one of the most iconic buildings in the whole world. Everyone knows it, and most people love its iconic design. So it might surprise you to hear that it's considered to be a classic example of bad project management. When the foundations were laid in 1959, it was supposed to be finished within four years and cost around 7 million Australian dollars. It actually took 14 years to build, and by the time it was ready to open, more than 100 million Australian dollars had been spent on it. Talk about running over budget! The problems began when the government ordered construction work on the outer shells of the building to begin before architect Jorn Utzen had finalized the design, meaning the Danish designer had to provide updated plans to builders as they were in the middle of the building process. Unsurprisingly, this led to mistakes being made. By the mid-1960s, with construction delayed by disagreements and impracticalities, a frustrated Utsan resigned from the project, taking his designs with him. That meant new architects had to come in and finish the building without being able to see Utsan's blueprint. It's a miracle it was ever built at all. All rail crossings are dangerous. No matter how many barriers or flashing lights you put up, there's always the occasional driver who presumes that they're indestructible and will try to cross the railway in front of an approaching train. Imagine how much more dangerous such a crossing would be if there were no barriers or lights. It's unthinkable anyone would ever create such a thing. And yet they have in Baku, the capital city of Azerbaijan. As we can see in this shocking footage, full-sized trains emerge without warning from the side of this busy highway and very nearly collide with cars in the process of doing so. The footage prompted shock all around the world when it went viral in 2016, prompting the authorities in Baku to think about their transport logistics again and remove the railroad. The area is safer now, but it's beyond belief that anyone ever thought that this was okay. If you visit Mai Klong in Thailand, you'll find a busy, bustling street market 
waiting for your patronage. You'll also find a busy Thai railway line. Mystifyingly, they're both in the exact same place. Six trains run directly through the middle of the market every day. The street vendors have to scramble to get out of their way when they approach. Fortunately, they've got this down to a fine art. They know what time the trains are due to come through their street, and so they get themselves and their goods out of the way ahead of schedule. We worry about what happens if the train runs early or late, but apparently this hasn't been a big problem so far. The railway market is known as the most dangerous market in the world, and it's only through the sheer stubbornness of the traders that it hasn't been closed down and moved elsewhere. We're not sure we'd want to eat any fruit or vegetables after a train's passed a few inches above them. There's a famous building in Boston, USA that's gone by many names over the years. Most people call it the John Hancock Tower, but it's also gone by 200 Clarendon Street, the X Building because of its iconic braces, and the Hancock. Unfortunately, it's also very well known because of some shoddy construction work that went on during its construction during the 1970s. Whoever was in charge of securing the windows and window frames on the upper levels of the skyscraper didn't do a very good job of it. And as a result, several large window panes fell out of their frames and plummeted all the way to the busy sidewalk below. Miraculously, nobody was hurt. That was one more embarrassment on top of a whole series of them for the architects, who didn't deliver their completed building to the city until 1976. It was supposed to be done in 1971, and the five-year delay saw the project go $100 million over budget. Even when it did open, it swayed so much in the wind that occupants on the upper levels suffered from motion sickness. Fortunately, those issues have all now been resolved. Not even Disney has a magic touch all the time when it comes to completing large projects on time, or as originally envisaged. Anyone who lives in or around the Walt Disney Concert Hall in downtown Los Angeles, California can attest to that. It was 1992 when construction work began, sparked by a $50 million donation to the city of Los Angeles by Lillian Disney, the widow of Walt. It didn't welcome its first guests until 2003, 11 years later. By that point, it had cost $274 million, with the parking garage somehow managing to cost a whole $110 million on its own. Nearly every cost provided at the design stage had been underestimated, and the project stalled completely between 1994 and 1996 as additional funds were sought to finish the job. When work resumed, the expensive and lavish carved stone exterior had to be abandoned and replaced with stainless steel. This was problematic. The concave sections of the outer walls reflected and intensified the sun, heating up the sidewalks directly opposite them up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and almost blinding residents of neighboring condominiums. The offending surfaces were eventually sanded down, and all is now well. Staying in the United States of America for a moment, if we move to Chicago, we'll find the Aeon Center, which was once known as the Amico Building. The 1,100-foot-tall building is the fourth largest skyscraper in Chicago, but back when it was built in 1973, it was the fourth tallest in the whole world. That made its opening a grand affair, but it almost didn't make it to its opening day after some pretty serious mistakes were made during construction. The building was clad in Carrera marble, but marble that thin had never been used to clad a building so tall before. It turned out that it wasn't suited to the job. A 350-pound slab of the material fell from the tower on Christmas Day in 1973, and crashed through the roof of the Prudential Center. By 1985, by which time the building was open and in regular use, a routine inspection found dangerous cracks and signs of bowing on several of the largest marble panels. The building had to be strapped in stainless steel to prevent the marble from falling off, and the whole structure was eventually resurfaced with a different form of marble in 1992. We expect architects to take sensible precautions whenever they design anything expected to be used by humans, but we'd expect them to be particularly careful if they're putting together something that will eventually be used by children. Sadly, they don't always do. 
In 2010, parents of children in the Brooklyn area of New York, USA were furious about a new playground that had been installed at Brooklyn Bridge Park. With its shiny chrome design, it looked futuristic and stylish, but somehow the designer team responsible for it had forgotten that steel gets very hot when the sun's out. At the warmest times of the day, the park's climbing domes became so hot that any child who came into contact with one would be likely to receive burns immediately. To make matters worse, the climbing domes were supposed to be the main form of entertainment for the park's young users. The local authorities decided to solve the problem by planting trees close to the domes to provide shelter. But even now, 10 years later, it's said that the trees don't completely solve the problem. If you were tasked with designing a bridge to carry tourists through a busy part of Venice, bearing in mind that Venice is one of the most popular vacation destinations in all of Italy, your first job would be to ensure that your bridge design could cope with lots of people attempting to walk over it at the same time. Santiago Calatrava somehow failed to do that when he designed and built a glass bridge in 2008, and after tourists were injured crossing his slippery, unstable bridge, he was fined more than $150,000. The architect told authorities that the glass steps on his bridge would need to be replaced once every 20 years, but instead eight of them had to be replaced just four years after the bridge opened. Whenever it rains, the glass becomes impossible to maintain balance upon, making crossings hazardous. When seen from a distance, it's a very aesthetically pleasing bridge, but with so many problems, you'd think twice about crossing it. It's generally thought that while it's still imperfect, it's safer today than it was 10 years ago. Have you ever woken up in the morning and wished there was a train that took you directly from your front door to your place of work? If so, perhaps you should consider moving to Chongqing in China, where there's a train line that runs directly through the middle of an apartment building. We don't know whether to call this a design disaster or a design triumph. It's convenient for all the people who live inside the apartments, but no matter how well designed it is, the constant passage of the trains must surely be causing structural damage. What makes this arrangement so remarkable is that the nine-story apartment complex was there before the monorail was. Chongqing wanted to expand their local railway service in 2004 and originally intended to tear the apartments down, but they eventually reconsidered and found another way to do it. This is that other way. While you might expect the value of your property to be reduced if someone decided to build a busy railway line through it, apparently apartments in this complex have increased in value because of both the novelty and the convenience. If you really loved your house, how far would you go to resist any attempt to have it bought out from underneath you so it could be knocked down? Do you think you'd be able to hold on even if you were offered three or four times the value of what your house was really worth? This is a question that comes up a lot in China, which is full of so-called nail houses. Nail houses appear in areas that have been earmarked for construction work, such as a new highway, but the houses belong to people who have refused to accept offers of compensation from builders and chosen to remain in their homes. One particularly notable example is this freestanding house in the middle of the asphalt in Wenling, which belonged to an elderly man named Lu Baogan and his wife. All of Lu's neighbors took the money and gave up their houses, but he wasn't for moving, and he stayed put while the road was built all around him. Eventually, years after the dispute started in 2012, he accepted a vastly inflated price and moved out. This house is now gone, but there are still plenty more all over the country. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.